this has to be done in time. So in time means about a year before. Mm. I mean, imagine that the products of your licensees are mainly, I would say, 90% made in China. And they, they, they need to be shipped, uh, shipping that, that took two, two months at least. Mm. So this, um, um, there is a, is, a, is, a, is a show in, in Nuremberg, the Nuremberg Toy Fair, you might know about it, uh, it's one of the biggest toy, show, toy fairs. This is at the beginning of February, but this is Christmas business. So there is about 10 months in between. That is the cycles we are talking about, that is the timeline we are talking about, and you have to consider that as well, especially if, it, if, if, if the launch of your merchandising program is in any way connected to the release of your property, be it a film or be it a book or whatever. And then you need workforce. You need specialized workforce. So, first of all, if you don't have an A license where people call you and want to buy the license, the, 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 the license you have to offer them. So you have to do acquisition. You have to know to whom, to what people you have to talk. You have to know. Uh, who, who are the biggest player? You have to know about um, um, you have to know about marketing these things. You have to do um, the approval process after uh, the companies have been de have developed their products. You have to check them if they are in accordance with your guidelines, your style guide, your artwork, <coughs> and so on. So this is something you probably don't do in your within your normal. Um, time and this is probably something you don't know how to do it. And then again it's the accounting. You have to check the royalty reports. You have to ask for the royalty reports. You have to count the balance them with the minimum guarantees and so on. So this is all specialized aspects of licensing and uh, a normal licensor who is not actually um, involved in the, in the licensing business but in producing films and books and what whatsoever a normal licensee doesn't license or does not have the expertise to do these things. So wrapping this up, I must um, leave the framework, artwork, personnel and so on. It's 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 a question of investment as well. You you can't just decide, okay I have a nice property and I have obviously a big target group or whatever, so I start this project. You have to have an investment and Wrapping all these things up together, I would say this easily adds up to, to, a, to an amount between 50 and 100,000 euro at the end. Yeah. Um, this is again something to consider um, later on when we talk about potential revenues, potential profit out of these business. And you need a strategy in the policy. You need uh, to know how to position your property, how, what, what you want to do and what you want to exclude. Uh, you have to discuss questions like alcohol, tobacco, sex, and explicit language, uh, lighters, as I said before, uh, sweets, um, additional um, nutritional elements, and so on. So you, you have to, to, to discuss if you, if you want to check Chinese fabrication, for example. Is that a part of your licensing business? So uh, do you want to make sure that no child labor is involved when licensees deliver the goods? Uh, so everything has to be considered and everything needs um, a good thinking before you start and um, a quite a realistic um, actually framework from your side. So. Of course, the alternative is working with an agent. Agent can provide you with a lot of support, um, take away the, ma the basic uh, specialized parts of the work of the licensing business, but they can't do everything for you. They can't protect your property. You have to do that by yourself. They, they, can't, deliver, they can't deliver the artwork to the licensee, but you have to deliver the agent to the agent. Uh, they can do the accounting, they can do the approval, they, they can do the acquisition and whatever, but they also want to have a share out of your licensing revenues. What does it mean, share? 
uh, normally I would say it's 30 percent of this kind of international standard in this business. Yeah. 30 percent, I mean, in, in, in certain cases, some licensors try to negotiate this amount. In certain cases, it goes down to 25. Sometimes, as an agent, if you're happy, you can discuss 20, 35 or so, but I would say yeah. roughly 30 percent. Um, next question, you can go quickly through that. What, what can you license? Um, there is a couple, this is the typical licensing categories um, um, which we actually focus on. Um, there is some which come in the first run and some in the second and some in the, in, in the, in the third run. In the first run, if it is animation or if it is a children's properties, is always Toys and games. Toys and games means card, card sport games, means puzzles, means memo games, travel games. It can also mean electronic games, but probably not in the first one. And it means, of course, also plush. Plush or stuffed toys, for us, it, if we're talking about children's properties, for us it's always the first thing we do because this is, as, as we say, character is king, this is the emotional thing. You know, if you have a nice character from the books or from the entertainment or whatever, that is what children are affected to, what they love and where the emotional link uh, is between your property and them. So, Blush is always in the first line. Um, you all know about um, Hello Kitty, Bob the Builder, SpongeBob, uh, stationary items, you know, diaries, notebooks, you know, the pens and the rubbers and the rulers and all these. And, and pencil cases and so on. So it's also an, um, a quite um, good category. Apparel and accessories in terms of turnover is the biggest category in the licensing business, but this has to do with the uh, special licensing um, activities of, of the fashion labels, of course. You know? But still, if you make it to license um, your property on the closing stuff before the closings or on the apparel line, then and if the retailer takes it, um, puts it on his shelves or on the hangers, then this is definitely a good sign. I would say then you can say I've made it. You know, I that is kind of breaks through then. Home and living is uh, also quite um, successful category. This means bed linen towels for children. It means melamine. Cutlery, it means porcelain, it can mean shower curtains and carpets, it can mean even furniture. Um, but this, again, for a very successful property in the, I don't know, fifth or sixth, sixth year, but not at the beginning. Personal care is the category where we license liquids like shampoo, body lotion, shower gel, soap, sometimes even plaster or medical stuff. Um, Outdoor and sports means bicycles, balls, and these kind of things. Uh, publishing is, of course, an interesting property because uh, a category because some, it's sometimes where the licensing process starts. As I mean, I mean, you, you, it's your intention, it's your intention as well. And I can say, uh, at Bavarius Sonobi represent all of our children property originally come from the publishing side. So we have been successful to launch a couple of properties without any TV support or any feature films or whatever. But that is, um, it, is a, it is a quite an effort, you know, it's quite an effort and needs quite a lot of marketing support. Um, publishing means a lot, it can, it can mean uh, the making of book, uh, it can mean an activity book, it can mean a picture book, it can mean calendar or storytelling books and so on. Then another interesting category is food. Food is also a good marketing tool, of course. I mean, you all remember the, the Kellogg's promotions or whatever. I mean, they, 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 they are huge. They probably don't pay much and sometimes they don't even pay anything. Uh, they even don't pay anything, but uh, uh, it, it creates awareness. It, sh it, gives, it shows the images and, and um, to, to a larger audience. It can be a good marketing tool for the release of your brand. 
And then these promotions like airline, there is airlines painted with uh, the, 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 the images of films. Uh, you know, there's a Haribo, um, there's a Haribo airplane at the moment flying around. Uh, there is, um, we can have make promotions with insurances, with car companies, with travel companies, and, and everything. So there is actually no limit. There's no limit, but this is the most um, common categories. Now, come to the most important point about the money, so the business model. Um, I made a calculation here for you, just to give you an idea um, what you can earn from a simple, single item like a t-shirt. And in my calculation, my calculation is based on a licensed t-shirt, let's say it costs about 20 euros. If it costs 20 euros, though there is VAT on it, you have to deduct it, you have to take it away. So take away in Germany 19% VAT, that means it leaves you with 16 euro 80. This is the net retail price, but the royalty, what you earn as a licensee, a licensor, the royalty is based on the wholesale. The wholesale price, normally talking about normal consumer goods, is half of that. That means, again, deduct 8 euros 40, leaves you with 8 euros 40. And then keep from those 8 euros 40, which is the net wholesale price, keep a 10% royalty. 10% is the average. There is exceptions, we can talk about this later, but this is the average. So that leaves you with 84 euro cent. And if you work with an agent, you have to share these 84 euro cent. The agent keeps his share and you keep 59 euro cent. So that is a quite simple calculation. And that is, um, that is I, I, I like to show this calculation because it gives you such a realistic figure. If you, coming back to what I've said before that um, your investment to set up a licensing program might be something between 50 and 100,000 euro. Then think about how many t-shirts you have to sell until you reach that. Yeah. So, and then you just you just break even. You didn't make any profit. So, I want to talk a bit more about that um, because that is. Um, I want to talk to you about how we negotiate our deals with the licensees. Let's take let's take this uh, let's take a plush figurine, a stuffed toy, instead of a T-shirt. Let's say it costs again twenty euros. So you enter into the negotiation with the licensee and you ask him, okay, so how many um, stuffed toys you want to sell? What is your sales estimate for this nice? little cuddly toy. And he says, okay, I want to talk to, to sell about 50,000 per year. This is quite a lot. 50,000 euros is quite a lot um, from just one character. But it, let, let's suppose he, his, his sales estimation is 50,000. Then you'd say, okay, for this 50,000, 50, if I take that uh, times 84 euro cent, that makes about uh, 42,000 Euros licensing turnover just by the sales of these 50,000 um, stuffed toys. We, as an agent or licensed source, normally take part of that money, part of these 42,000 euros, as a minimum guarantee. We call it minimum guarantee. Actually, is an advanced payment. It's the money you want to have from this licensee as a security deposit. Uh, uh, as a, mini, a guarantee, a minimum guarantee. That means this money is not refundable. He, he, he has to pay it whatever happens, if it sells, if it sells or not. Um, of course, it's sub 